Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. So last time we finished off the main story, but we're not quite done yet. Still a little bit more content to see. First off, we have the Jetstream DLC and the Blade Wolf DLC. Those are both story episodes that were released after the game came out, and we are going to be covering both of them. First off, though, let's start off with the Jetstream DLC. Gonna lose our story mode checkpoint, which is fine. We're also, of course, gonna still be playing on hard. It's got its own tutorial, but I think we're going to skip it because I'm pretty sure I can cover what the differences are and it won't take too long. Mmm, cherry blossoms. Yeah. I take it you're not a fan? No. They make me sick. I knew Johnson's team was working on some fancy pants new reception area. But Jesus. When I get my hands on that candy ass, he'll be lucky if he can even carry his box of shit out of the building. <laughs> Is it really so horrible? They're only trees. They go from full blossom to bare in a week. One fucking week. Everywhere in DC you hear, oh, it's so fleeting and beautiful. Pathetic. What do you think? Oh. <laughs> nature is just nature. Not beautiful, not ugly. The wind blows, the flowers float away, it's simply how things are. Huh. In any case, Minuano should be close. Minuano? The cool Brazilian wind. Mm. A.K.A. Jetstream Sam. What the hell you think you're doing, buddy? Well, what do we have here? Oh. This? Man. All right, so this DLC story takes place before the main events of Metal Gear Rising. We're here as Jetstream Sam in the sewers underneath Denver. I know they look a lot like Guadalajara's sewers, but I promise they're actually different. And we are now controlling Jetstream Sam. He controls largely the same as Raiden. It's still mostly the same type of stuff. You know, we've got our dash, we've got our light attacks and our heavy attacks. The problem is, Sam is a little bit slower than Raiden. He's not quite a ninja, he is more of a samurai. But what he loses in speed, he makes up for with the ability to do a couple new things in combat. The biggest one is the ability to charge up attacks like this. And it'll give you a more powerful version of whatever one you were going to do before. You can do this at any point in the combo. Some of them have ranged effects like that. Uh, the fourth hit, the uh, charging triangle attack has a range as well. And of course you can do it at different points to get different attacks. Uh, one of them is kind of a juggling move if you do it on the second. You can see it up in the air charge the air attack so there's quite a lot of versatility when it comes to what kind of stuff you can do with charged attacks 
And he's also got another ability, which we'll get into in a little bit. First off, though, let's go ahead and grab this collectible here, of course. Uh, we're going to be collecting a lot of things here. Uh, this is the Fuel Cell Plus. It's new in the DLC. You didn't see any of this in the main story. We're basically going to be upgrading all of Sam's attributes inside the game. There's no BP upgrade menu or anything. We're going to have to find all the collectibles ourselves, so... It's going to be quite a few things scattered throughout the levels here we're going to have to collect. Alright, so we got our first repair nano paste there. We might as well go ahead and equip that. Of course, you know, still all the sub-weapons and recovery items and stuff are still there. But we're going to start with a clean slate. Right, as we're on the corner... You can see we're going to have our first encounter. They start us out very light, and we can use this time to uh, demonstrate Sam's new ability, the taunt, by pressing up on the D-pad. You can kind of enrage enemies. It'll make them stronger and a little bit more aggressive, and as you can see, they go down pretty easily. It really lowers their defense, and with little minor guys like this, you can basically just chop them down in one strike. So uh, that is another thing where Sam kind of has the advantage over right, and it can make battles a little bit tougher if you've got a lot of enemies. But it's also the, really the best way to deal a lot of damage. Alright, so I'm going to try to avoid as many battles as I can here, because I really don't want to have to fight that Votum Jerker. We should be able to take this guy out here. And of course, you know, we've still got our Blade Mode, we've still got Zendatsus. I kind of like Sam's Zendatsus a little bit better. They seem kind of cleaner than Raiden's, you know. He just sticks the sword in and grabs the spine, so that's definitely effective. However, I think we somehow avoided alerting all the other enemies, so... Pretty much free here. We've got another item to collect. This is going to be our first Endurance Plus. And uh, like I said before, lots of things to collect. We're going to be upgrading Sam's fuel cells and life to the exact same max totals that Raiden had, which is 200% uh, HP and, you know, a handful of fuel cells. So, yep, quite a lot to get. And of course, since Sam is a samurai, we don't quite have the ninja kill option. You can kind of, like, you know, half do it by just thinking of item and using blade mode. The problem is when their bodies explode, it'll pretty much always send enemies into caution. So stealth isn't quite a factor when you're playing at Sam. You're more likely to just go in and, you know, rip people to shreds, which is probably more fun anyway. Yeah, we also got the cardboard box there, and we picked up a couple sub-weapons. You know, you can still use the box and everything. It's exactly the same. But like I said, stealth really isn't that big of an option here. So I don't really know exactly why they give you the box. But uh, we've also got our first data storage up here. We've got five of those to collect here in the DLC story. Alright, so this poor sap is... <laughs> oh man, he doesn't even know what's coming. Alright, well, let's, let's do it quickly then. What do we have here? Maybe I should give it a try. Yeah, and as you can tell, this is definitely a VR mission. Now, VR missions in this uh, DLC story work a little bit differently than they did in the main game. Whenever you do the action, you just have to activate it from within the game. It doesn't unlock it to play later. You have to activate it here. The upside is that sometimes, uh, I think on maybe on two VR missions, you get rewards after you complete them. So, you know, they're worth doing. Uh, if not for the rewards, just for the fun factor, you know? So let's go ahead and activate the first one. Alright, so this is what VR missions look like. I don't think we actually did any of them in the main game, so this may be the first time you're seeing this kind of thing. It looks rather simple. There's a couple guys to start out with, so we can go ahead and send Datsu one of them. The trick is, of course, once we take at least one of them out, we're gonna get a gecko, and while you may remember geckos from the main game as not being that much trouble, here in the Sam DLC, they're uh, actually kind of a pain. So uh, what I like to do is just taunt them, as you can see, and then try to get these aerial charges in. It takes about three in order to Zandatsu them, uh, but once you get the third one in, you can just go straight for a blade mode right away. They also don't have to be enraged on the third one, just regular like this is fine. So then, as you can see, once you get the slowdown, you can just go in and get a Zandatsu. And there's also a second gecko that's going to come up here once we take out the second guy. So let's just oops, watch out for that grenade. Come on, dude. Someone attack me. Okay, fine. We'll do it ourselves. Alright, so second guy down. You can hear the gecko. You can see the gecko. Nice charge attack there. Oh, man. 
And yeah, they're definitely very aggressive. One of the big things about this DLC is that enemies are actually uh, quite mad at you for some reason. Uh, you know, a lot of them have a few new moves and they attack basically non-stop, even if you don't taunt them. Uh, you know, that's part of the gear, but... Alright, so not quite enough yet. One more should be fine. It really doesn't have that much left. I'll do it. Man, that is such a weird angle. Just cut... Oh! Uh, I got it. Oh. <laughs> this is the slow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and squeeze. There we go. Man. Sonny, that is the slowest I have ever seen this game dip in terms of FPS. That was a little wild. Uh... Alright, so last guy, and this will take care of it. And there we go. Took no damage, I believe. Yep, so that'll leave us with an S rank. Sweet. Pretty nice little ending screen there, too. And thankfully, this turns out to be one of the VR missions that does reward you for completing it. So let's go ahead and grab it. We're going to get our next endurance plus. Already up to 120, nice. And uh, this is where we can also explore Saman's maneuverability a little bit. While he doesn't have the ninja run, you can't just automatically jump up platforms, you do actually have a double jump. So, uh, you can also combine it with a mid-air dash, so that's pretty helpful, actually. Greetings, Samurai. Basically, state your business here. Me? Oh, just sharpening my skills. Wandering the earth, dispensing justice, but only to those who deserve it. Such as outlaws, desperados. You refer to World Marshal. <laughs> the ones holding your leash, right? The ones who issue my orders. And your orders are to kill me? Yes. <laughs> Call me biased. But those seem like pretty dumb orders, Pop. Why don't you try thinking for yourself? For myself. Should I disobey a direct order, my memory would be wiped. Well, that's a pity. I am sorry. You must die. Then... I am sorry. As well. You will die. And now we get to fight Blade Wolf. First things first, you gotta taunt, otherwise you do basically no damage. The second thing is, even though we fought him as Raiden in the main game, he is a lot more aggressive and quite a bit tougher. That's pretty much the theme with all the bosses. Uh, if you can get him down like this, a charge attack while taunted does a lot of damage. Just look at how much that took off. He's all the way down to 42% already. The problem with uh, making them enraged by taunting is that you actually take damage when parrying. So if you kind of care about that sort of thing, you really have to master dodging attacks, uh, learning what their tells are and everything as well. So we're doing a ton of damage, we've already got it basically all the way down, so let's just finish this. You fight because you're forced to. I fight because I choose to. My design is flawed. Now, now. I am quite good, you know. But I, uh... <sighs> 
And of course, we come away with an S. Wouldn't have been without the no damage, but well, no damage is definitely where it's at. And of course, once Blade Wolf explodes, he actually drops our next collectible to get another Endurance Plus, which refills our fuel cells completely as well. So it's totally worth chopping him up into a million pieces, right? Oh, it's got our pair of nano paste over there. You can collect that during the battle if you really need it, but uh, I figure we'll just save it for now. All right, so you can see we've got more enemies up ahead. These Votum Jerka, I might as well go ahead and fight this one since it's by itself. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to get far away and let it charge you, then counter it, and you can pretty much just take care of it instantly. Uh, dealing with it close quarters as Sam is kind of tough because you don't quite have the dashing attack options that Raiden does. So uh, it's a little bit tougher. You probably do want to taunt them, but you've got to make sure not to get hit, otherwise they'll do a ton of damage. Uh, the one thing you can still use to your advantage is their little kind of swirling leg attack. Uh, it hits a lot more. It hits like eight times. Oh, hi. Just, just kind of shoot me with a machine gun at close range there. Ah, didn't send Otsu, whatever. Uh, but yeah, their, their like spinning leg attack thing hits like eight times here in the DLC. I think it was only like four during the main story. So, you know, you got to kind of parry a little bit more, but it kind of makes it easier to counter, to be honest. You can also get this collectible at the end, which is going to fill up our fuel cells. So, you know, it's nice that we're full on that again. All right, so now we can head back to the door that we were meant to go through originally. And I think this is the part where we're going to transition into kind of a new section here. At last, our hero reaches the castle. And uh, yeah, our hero has reached the... Not quite a castle, but I guess Sam's being a little, you know, romantic. He kind of does that. And you can see, uh, we got a gecko coming in. Like I said before, these guys are kind of a pain with Sam. Uh, you can't really skip this one, and unfortunately, you can't really, like, use blade mode from behind. I mean, you'll pretty much get discovered as soon as you go in the next room. So, you know, you might as well just go ahead and uh, try to take them on in here. Alright, that went about as good as any gecko battle you can ask for. Got a grenade on us that we have to get away from. There we go. Alright, now just a normal dude. Come on. It's also kind of a little disappointing that the really the only finisher Sam has for people, the only execution animation, is doing that sort of, you know, sideways kick. Like, it's seem, it does seem pretty strong, but, you know, at the same time, it's like Raiden had quite a bit of variety depending on what the enemies were. And now we've got a, a heavy katana wielding cyborg. The problem with these guys, as you can see, is that you can't really charge your attacks because they are fast and will hit you while you're charging. So really, your best bet is to try to get into a parry battle with them. Uh, otherwise, you can keep doing kind of normal attacks, but you know, eventually they'll start blocking those as well. Oh, the camera, man, that was bad. All right, I can't see. All right, well, managed to pull it through. <laughs> Very narrowly avoided disaster there. I really didn't want to have to use a repair nano paste on one guy. But um, camera kind of screwed me over a little bit there. Okay, so now we can head into the next area. And you can see uh, this should look a little bit familiar from our adventures as Raiden. Uh, before we head on to our uh, favorite freight elevator, though, let's go to the room next to it. Blade mode chest at the end. This is obviously going to be a nice collectible. Got up to under 40%. Now, at this point, it's going to spawn some enemy sliders. Are incredibly easy to take care of the Sam, because you can just immediately take them out in Zendatsu with the charging air attack. It's really useful in a lot of circumstances. Then just some shield guys. We can pretty much deal with them like normal. And Zandatsu both, nice. And it's also worth noting that this is actually a ranked fight, so it's a pretty easy one to S rank. You really don't need to put in much effort whatsoever. Okay, now we can leave. Just what I was looking for. Might have seen the uh, little item pickup thing down here. Yeah, a pair of nano paste. It's worth picking those up. There's not really a whole lot throughout the DLC, so you know it's worth picking up the ones you can find. And of course, just a uh, grenade for good measure. And now let's activate this. How much you want to bet we're going to have to fight someone on the elevator, right? 
Of course, they just immediately appear behind us. Right, so let's go ahead and start taking them out. They start us off with just some normal guys, which is really easy. Uh, this battle doesn't really get too hard. It's nowhere near as annoying as the Freight Elevator is riding. Uh, these Dwarf Gecko are actually kind of a problem as Sam. You're not, you know, really at any risk of dying from them. But the problem is he has basically no area of effect options. I mean, your third attack kind of does, but it's, you know, a little bit slow. So sometimes you'll get jumped on anyway. So you may just have to kind of let them pile on you and just shake them off one by one. See, close enough. The intruder is riding up on West Number Two. <laughs> Roger that. Shutting it down and sending reinforcements. Assist them in engaging the intruder. Copy. And you can also kind of cheese this one a little bit because there's a guy who's going to show up here. He's got a rocket launcher, so, you know, I'll just go ahead and take him out immediately <laughs> as soon as he lands. And then all we'll have to deal with is one raptor, which the first time we fought... Oh, man, that was pretty bad. And I actually, that actually just kind of knocked me back. That was a little weird. All right, so raptors are kind of a give and take when you're fighting a Sam. Uh, they're kind of hard to avoid if you uh, taunt them, but otherwise they can take a little while to take down because they attack quite a lot. I also like to do these EM fields that are basically unavoidable on the freight elevator. So as you can see, I don't really like to taunt them too much, especially if there's just one. You know, it, it's, it doesn't matter if you really have to take a bit of time. Alright, and that got him enough to stun him, so you know, it doesn't take too long. Uh, plus, you can actually be in a little bit of danger when they're strengthened and you can't really parry without taking damage. You know, we still ended up fine on the rank anyway, so, you know, whatever. And they also, they seem to be really lenient about the Zandatsus in the DLC. See, there were two possible Zandatsus there. I missed one of them. That's 50%, but I still got 900 points for it. So, I don't know. They, they, they kind of take it easy on you, it seems. And of course, got our data storage there behind the crates, and we can jump up to the top. Uh, if they would have stopped it sooner, we would have been screwed, but thankfully they had really slow reaction times. So there's a handful of items we can pick up around here in this area. Another repair nano paste, again, worth getting. Also a homing missile, which is going to come in handy later. And uh, before we head into the next area, you may miss this VR mission in the corner. But uh, I didn't, so let's check it out. And now for the second VR mission, it's based on a pretty interesting concept, if you ask me. We're kind of on this floating platform with no walls all around. So basically, you can just knock people off and take care of them instantly. It's really nice. However, the enemies will try to use that to their advantage as well if you fall off the platform. Like, wow, that was really close. Um, if you fall off the platform, it will automatically end and you'll have to restart. So it's a good idea to take those guys out first thing by just, you know, knocking them straight off the ledge. And they'll take care of them quickly. Just, kind of, just, just get this guy to attack me. All right, and I'll take care of him. Oh, yes, the kick actually got the hammer guy as well, man. That makes it quite a lot easier, actually. Slice him up a bit for some combos. All right, now we're going to enter the final stage. Some sliders should come out. There they are. And we can just uh, take these guys out with our charged aerial attack. And unfortunately, you can't send dots to them for whatever reason in this VR mission. So, you know, if you hit them, you can just dash away and let them fall to the ground. Oh man, this, they can get you with rockets, the machine gun fire is a little annoying. Uh, you kind of have to watch out, you want to try to make sure to stay near the middle. I have no, I mean, I have no idea where I was on the platform there. Uh, you want to try to stay near the middle because their rockets can just knock you back and there's not a lot you can do about it. But once you take them all out, we're good. Looks like we got a true S rank there, pretty nice. And unfortunately, this one completely snubbed you. Don't really get anything for it, uh, other than it being a good experience, I guess. The other good news is the items actually respawn in the room that you're in whenever you do a VR mission. So we could actually get an extra repair nano paste and homing missiles and all that stuff. So I don't know. Maybe that's a little bit of a reward. But uh, anyway, let's just move on from here. I am 
monsoon. We've been expecting you, Sam. Oh? They say you took on a drug cartel back in Brazil all by yourself. Almost took it down, too. <laughs> if you had, another outfit would have taken its place. One way or another, it always goes back to business as usual. You realized that, didn't you, Sam? That's why you left. I was out for revenge. And I got it. Well then. Let's see what you got now. Unfortunately, it's not a boss fight against the Monsoon, but it's against the Metal Gear Ray. And in case you were wondering, yes, you can taunt the Metal Gear Ray and make it angry at you. Don't know how that works, but you know. So as you can see, the strategy is largely the same, of course, uh, as with Blade Wolf. He's been modified a bit to be quite a lot more aggressive. Uh, he's also a lot faster. You're going to see him moving around a lot. Yeah, you can see those, oh man, those mouth charges are pretty quick. Uh, you can, of course, still parry them. It's probably a good idea, too. Uh, except, of course, if he's enraged, because that'll just cause damage. Don't want that to happen. So we're done with that side. We've already brought him down uh, quite a bit. Uh, he goes relatively quickly if you taunt him, because you can break pieces off with just a couple hits. Uh, otherwise, as you can see, it goes a little bit slowly. You kind of have to bring that meter down to half, so... Definitely make sure to taunt whenever you can. His attacks are pretty easily avoidable. He also kind of sucks at stomping with that foot for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Alright, so just a couple more. Uh, we're going to go for the leg here. Probably just one more hit and we'll be able to take off its cannon. Uh, then we'll still need to chop off another piece. So that's when we get to go for the head. Come on, there we go. So at this point, it's got about 16% left. Uh, you could just enrage it and keep hitting the legs. That would deal enough damage to take it out in, you know, a handful of combos. But uh, I'd rather take him out the cool way. So if we can block these uh, head thrusts, whatever you want to call them, uh, we'll get a good shot at the head here. 